Welcome to this new episode of Elite Dangerous Science. Today, in honor of the upcoming release of 2.4 The Return, I will discuss exotic biochemistries, especially ammonia-based life, as Thargoids are rumored to be from this branch of xenobiology. So before I start talking about all the exciting alien stuff, let me refresh your memory on basic chemistry so that everybody is up to speed. Let's start with two basic building blocks of biochemistry, water and carbon. Carbon is a member of the carbon elemental family, which essentially means it wants to gain an extra four electrons in its outer electronic shell. Carbon does that by creating covalent bonds with other elements, and thus sharing an electron with another atom. Since carbon wants to create four bonds, it makes it an ideal candidate to be the skeleton structure for big organic molecules. This is why if you burn any living thing, plant, animals, or even humans, if you're that kind of person, you're left with a pile of black ash. Now water is also a crucial part of Earth biology. This is why scientists are so eager to find water on other celestial bodies, especially liquid water. The reason for that is because the water molecule is polar. The oxygen atom is more electronegative, which means it tends to pull electrons closer to it, thus making its side more electrically negative. The side of the molecule where the two hydrogen atoms are is therefore more electrically positive. This property allows water to be the canvas for biochemical processes within a cell as it breaks apart ionic compounds. The surface tension of water is also a direct consequence of its chemical properties. Current speculations on exotic biochemistry are based on the idea that these basic ingredients of life could be substituted by other elements or compounds with similar properties. For example, carbon is part of the carbon family in the periodic table. This means other elements in that family will have identical chemical properties, namely the ability to form four covalent bonds. This is why people speak of silicon-based life, as silicon is also a member of the carbon family. Ammonia is a nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms, and is, like water, a polar molecule. Now, back to the Thargoids. When people allude to water-based life, ammonia-based life, or silicon-based life, they're not necessarily talking about different things every time. An ammonia-based life could also be carbon-based, or it could be silicon-based as well. The fact that the Thargoids are ammonia-based just means that they have ammonia instead of water in their cells to serve as canvas for their cellular activity. We do not know for sure if they're silicon-based or carbon-based organisms, however. My personal opinion is that there is a higher chance for them to be carbon-based, as carbon is a more common element and also tends to be more stable in polymeric form. Now, for ammonia to be liquid, and remember, we need it in its liquid form, just like water. It needs to be kept at low temperature if it exists at our atmospheric pressure. Liquid ammonia can also exist at liquid water temperature, but the atmospheric pressure then must be 40 to 60 times that of Earth's. We know, however, from interviews with people working at Frontier, that if we were to shake the hand of a Thargoid, we would literally burn it. This implies that Thargoids are native to a planet with atmospheric pressure not too far from ours, but with much lower temperature. We are talking about 50 to 100 degrees Kelvin colder than us. Shaking a Thargoid's hand would not only burn them, it would probably give us bad frostbite as well. A Thargoid meeting a human would be like us meeting a being with internal temperature of a whopping 279 degrees Fahrenheit or 137 degrees Celsius. To further demonstrate how hostile our living environment is to the Thargoids, let me remind you that ammonia is flammable when in contact with oxygen. This means that if your friendly neighborhood Thargoid is having a barbecue without his suit and burns his hand on the grill, he will combust like the Hindenburg. Also, the temperatures at which Thargoids operate means two things. The first is that chemical processes within their cells, if these are identical to ours, take forever. The second is that they can most likely use compounds and elements in their metabolism that would be impossible for us to use at our living temperatures due to how unstable they are. Since the Thargoids don't seem to be slow, almost vegetable-like beings, giving their potential for destruction, we can infer that their biology does in fact incorporate some of these less stable compounds. Finally, another theory for the basis of their biology is that they use an ammonia water mixture. This would mean their operating temperature would be somewhere between that of pure liquid water and pure liquid ammonia. This would also mean that their biology would be somewhat less exotic to us than if it was pure ammonia. So, to summarize this hypothetical picture of Thargoid biology, 
We have an organism that is most likely carbon-based, using ammonia to support cellular activity under a pressure of the same order of magnitude as ours. The ideal temperature for this organism would be situated somewhere between 240 to 270 Kelvin, depending on the pressure. This organism would also most likely use elements and compounds that Earth life would be incapable of handling due to how unstable they are above 300 degrees Kelvin. I will probably make another video on the biology of the Thargoids as we get more information on them. There is already some information available about their gender and reproductive system that suggests that they have something analog to DNA in chromosomes in their cells, but I will wait until I know more before I do anything on the subject. Well, I hope you learned something today. Comment if there's anything that I forgot or that I got wrong. And, uh, well, until next time, this is Commander V at your service.